Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name's Bob, and in this series of videos by Digital Partner Engineering and the SAP HANA Academy, we'll be looking at Data Intelligence 3.1. This video shows how you can create validation rules when using the modeler. In the previous video, we built this graph within Data Intelligence Modeler, and what it does quite simply is it reads from a table within HANA Cloud, and it outputs the data in CSV format. And we can see that data here when we're modifying the graph in design time. Again, in this video, we're gonna be looking at validation rules. So what I'll do is I'll search for that validation operator and I'll put it onto the screen. So the output of the wiretap can now be an input into this validation rules. And again, the wiretap just lets us see the data in CSV format. To configure the operator, we right click and go to open configuration. Of course, we've also got the documentation that's available to us. So if I right click, we can go to op open documentation. And as it says, the validation rule creates rules and root records that can pass through the pass output port. So you have the concept of pass and fail. So to demonstrate this, if we go back to the configuration, what we'll need to do is look at the input schema. So we can add that schema based on that CSV. So I'll add a column and that first one will be date. The type will be string because remember the data is coming to us from a CSV. Now with the magic of video, I'll make adding all the rest of these columns very quick. So when you've added the six columns from that CSV, we just need to click on save. To review them, if we go back to each item, item one is a string, two is the ID, and then the rest of the columns are keys. So I'll click on save. So now that we've set the input schema, what we need to do is define the rules. So we can add the rules here. So the rules are quite simple. We're gonna base them on values. So we're gonna add a rule which says the first one is that key one must be less than 130. And the fail action will be fail. And the second rule will be that key one must be greater than 70. And again, the fail action is fail. Now, of course, I can apply multiple rules to multiple columns. I'm only doing it to one column to demonstrate how it works. And it might look a bit counterintuitive, but the rules actually mean that all values greater than 130 or less than 70 fail. So this doesn't mean if the key is greater than 70, it actually means if it's less than 70, it will fail. It's kind of the reverse. So all I need to do now is select save. So now we can see we've got two rules and we've got six items in our input schema. So now, of course, what we want to do is see the output. Now, what you'll notice is that we've got more output ports coming out of the validation rule. So to see the values, we're going to use a wiretap. So again, I'll drag wiretaps onto the screen. And what I'll do is if I move my mouse over the validation rules, you'll see we've got pass, which we're going to put into this wiretap. And if I add another wiretap, we'll put the fail into this wiretap. You've also got information to do with error message for each of those separate ports. Again, by going to the documentation, you've also got more information on exactly how this validation rule operator works, including lots of detailed information on the ports right at the bottom. So those last two ports deal with errors and fail information. So of course, now what we've done, we've finished, of course, we'll want to test this. So what I'll do is I'll save the graph. We've got confirmation below that we've saved the graph. We can actually clear those messages. So I'll clear all the validation messages and we'll also clear the log. And then of course, we'll run the graph. If we go to the status, we'll see it's pending. 
Of course, we won't see the open UI link while it's pending. We need to be in, it needs to be in running status. So now we can see it's running, so we can access the wiretap by right-clicking and selecting Open UI. So here we can see all the pass results, all those that match that certain threshold. So here the, the key one is the first key here. So again, this has to be below 130 and above 70, which all of them look like they are. And of course, to see the other wiretap, we can just select it here in the tab to see our failed rules. So we've got two failed rules. You can see that with the comments failed rule. You know which column it's failed on. And if I go to the right of the cell ID, here we can see the first failed rule has a value of 65, which of course is less than 70. And if we look at the second failed rule, which is the next row, and we go to the right of the cell ID, we can see it's 133, which of course is above 130. And that is why it's the second failed rule, and that is indicated by 1 and 2. So now that we've validated that validation rule operator, and we've looked at the pass and fails, we can stop that graph from running. In the next video, we're going to look at using a Python 3 operator. So I'm going to demonstrate what we can do to the data now that we've got it in CSV format with another type of operator where we can add some code. And of course, that code will be in Python format. You can find more tutorials on our YouTube channel. And if you'd like to be informed as soon as new video tutorials are published, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching.